Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today we are going to learn how to create some fun, waxy text inside of Cinema 4D. Let's learn how. Alright, so this is what we're going to be making today, this waxy little type kind of thingamadoodle. So let's go ahead and make it. So we're going to create a new project here. And let's start off by creating a letter. And uh, let's just choose the letter A. We'll just do one for now. Let's adjust the alignment to middle. And let's choose a more interesting font here. You can choose whatever font you like. But I'm going to choose... Where are you? Culturism. Or culturista. I just like the nice little appendages here. Nice little blocky appendages. I think that's what you call them. Uh, and let's just make this a little bit deeper. And that's looking good. So now what we're going to do, how we're going to create this uh, waxy type is by allowing this letter to actually push through and deform a plane. So let's first create a plane. And we'll just switch the orientation to uh, negative Z. So it's actually facing, this is the front face there. Uh, and that's looking good. And let's just make this a little bit bigger. 800 by 800 and looking nice and let's just move our a down so what I want to do is allow this letter to push through and almost look like it's pushing through a curtain or a cloth and kind of moving and distorting this plane and kind of imprinting the profile of this letter into and stamping it into this plane object so what we can do for that is using a handy deformer called the collision deformer and I love these little icons because they try to give you a hint at what the heck each of these do and the collision deformer the icon for it is a sphere that looks like it's colliding into a plane and kind of creating some ripple so let's go ahead and let's explore come on with me as we explore the collision deformer so just as any other deformer to actually have an effect an object we need to make it a child of said object and that's gonna be our plane object here and the first thing we need to do is how this deformer works is you need to uh, define an object that you want this uh, collision deformer to interact with so what object do you want to collide into this plane well that's gonna be our motex object so we're just gonna go ahead drag and drop our motex object under the objects uh, field here and there is this thing called a solver and basically what a solver does is the type of collision that you want to do. Do you want to have an object intersect and collide with another object or something else? And right now for what we want to do, we actually want this object to be look like it's inside of an object and as we push it forward, looks like it's trying to uh, you know come out from behind a curtain or you know if you raise your foot and lift a bed sheet or something, you can kind of make out your foot or your toes something like that. So what we're going to do is make this a uh, the be inside of the object and then when it passes through stretch the object out. So once I do inside stretch you can see that as I move the letter A it is stretching and looking like it's bulging the plane from the inside. It's almost like an alien where the aliens trying to bulge through the stomach. And that just got gruesome really quick. Alright, no more references to that. So what we're going to do is, you can see that if I turn off the visibility here and I rotate, you can see we got a little bulgy doodle right there, but that does not look like an A. So what we need to do is, uh, if I go to my display, you can see that we have very little geometry, very little polygons to actually define the shape of the A. So what we can do is just crank up the width and height segments to like 110 to 110. And with that, uh, with at that added geometry, we can now see a well, a more well-defined profile or shape of our letter A. Uh, and right now, it's actually still pretty chunky, as you can see. So we can do two things to smooth this out. One being bringing in a subdivision surface, and then just placing our plane underneath that. And what that's going to do is smooth things out by subdividing uh, everything. Hence the name subdivision surface. Uh, and then we can do one other thing, and that is by using uh, what's called the smoothing deformer. It's very aptly named. Uh, and basically what it, uh, the smoothing deformer does is if I place this underneath 
uh, the plane and below the collision deformer. So we want the collision deformer to happen and then the smoothing deformer. So it's very important the smoothing comes second after the collision. And what that does is you can see immediately, boom, just smooths everything out. And then we have this stiffness value that we can adjust to uh, adjust that level of smoothness. So about you know 88, something like that, we get some nice smooth edges. Uh, got a little bit of rippling happening. So maybe bring that down a little bit more. And now you can see we have a really nice smooth letter A and we can adjust how far this gets pushed through. And this is, you know, this could be good for like embossed text and stuff like that. Uh, but we're not doing that, but you can kind of see how that, uh, this collision deformer can do just that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is try to bring back some of the details uh, on this object. So what we're gonna do is uh, one thing that's actually really neat and that is using, uh, under the object tab here in the collision deformer, is this fall off tab. Uh, and what this does is allows you to choose fall off based on uh, a few different methods. The one I like to use is the collider, and it basically you define the fall off of this uh, collision deformer based on a distance from the collider object, or a letter A. So I'm just gonna do that and choose that, and immediately you're not gonna see anything change. Uh, we have the fall off distance, and this is again the distance from our collider shape. We also have strength, and you can see as I'm adjusting this stuff, nothing's happening. And the reason why that is, is we have this curve editor here, and this curve editor basically drives uh, any anything that happens in this, uh, this fall off. And uh, the typical use for collider, or the, uh, the fall off, is for making kind of like ripples or you know, really manipulating how this collision shape is distorted across this, uh, the object or your plane. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, you know, we can ch uh, click this little point in our curve editor, or our spline editor here, and you can see that just kind of rounds things out. Uh, and what you're really gonna get to see, especially if I turn up the strength, is we have this, we have our collider shape, and then we have this bulge. And that is created from this curve editor. So I'm gonna just hold Command or Control and click and create another point. Control click again, create another point and another point. And you can see exactly what's happening is you can see this is basically the profile of what's happening here or of our fall off distance. So we can now adjust and more clearly see what all this stuff does. You can see the distance, this is like some ripples. Uh, some ripple action happening as this goes off. We can adjust the strength. You can see that this can add some nice, like if you wanted to really have full control over like ripple action, if you actually animated this letter A uh, colliding in and then creating these ripples, you could fully animate this. It's very art directable kind of ripples. Uh, but what I'm gonna use this for is I'm gonna choose a very small distance uh, and bring the strength down a little bit. I'm just gonna reset this curve editor to default. And what I wanna do is actually introduce a negative value here. And what this is gonna do is kinda of like push in and you can't really see, but it's kinda of dimpling along the edges of our object here. And you can see that that's just adding a, a little bit of detail, bringing back a little detail of that little A bit right there in our little appendages there. Uh, so what I wanna do is just right click and I'll actually wanna see what I'm doing and I'm gonna go show into separate editor. Now I can hold the two key and kind of zoom and hold the one key and pan. So zoom and pan and uh, just adjust this even further. So you can see we got that curve a little bit down there. So now what I can do is just bring this collider distance in and you can kind of see the difference between no uh, fall off and some fall off. You can see that with that collider, we get a little bit more of that dimpling action happening uh, on our object, and you can really get a sense of the form of our object a bit more. So that's just one thing that the uh, the uh, fall off is good for. I'm just going to choose a level of uh, strength of 15, a distance of 15, and a strength of 30, uh, 35 for now. And you can see again off and with fall off, get those dimples back there. So let's just go and go a little bit further with the options here on our collider or our uh, collision deformer. And the next tab we're gonna go over is this advanced tab. And a lot of these things we're not really gonna be 
uh, utilizing in this because this is not this is not going to be animated. So a lot of these things come in handy when you're animating or if you don't want very smoothed out edges or anything like that. So I'm going to skip over a few things. Uh, so the one thing that we're really not going to use is the size. And typically the size kind of as you, as you increase this, it creates a kind of buffer. So it tries to create a buffer between the collision, collision shape, collision object, and the object that it's being collided with just to prevent like geometry from... Uh, intersecting. And again, we don't need that because we don't even need to see our original uh, collider object or the object colliding into our plane. Uh, next thing is steps. And again, this is something that also comes in handy with more animated uh, compositions or projects. And this is basically increases the step calculation of the uh, collision deformer. So if you have fast moving objects or a lot of stuff happening, this just increases the detail, increases the calculation step for each frame. And again, this really doesn't help us out uh, much with this. Uh, you can see that it tightens it up a little bit. It's a little bit more of an accurate uh, collision calculation. So we wanna keep that fairly low because we don't wanna increase uh, the calculation time or render time or anything like that. Uh, stretch is basically defines how uh, the fall off is, like how far this stretches out and affects and distorts the object that you're uh, getting collided into. So it's how much across the surface this plane is stretching out. So we actually don't want this to stretch out too much. Uh, we don't want this to look like a cloth. We want this to more look like, uh, like more uh, like saran wrap or something like that. Uh, relax, other than being an awesome song by Frankie Goes to Hollywood, uh, relax allows the uh, polygons or the collision deformer to kind of relax, uh, relax the polygons or the springs that's creating the deformation. So you can see that we're getting less definition here because all those springs are relaxing. So uh, we'll just leave it at 20 for now. And uh, let's go into these three last options here. One being uh, the stiffness. And stiffness basically just uh, controls the overall elasticity of the collision shape. So if we bring this down, we're going to start reintroducing a lot more of our uh, profile shape. We get those dimples back in there. So I'm just going to keep this fairly low, say 20. Uh, and then the struct is short for structural, and it basically controls how distorted the mesh becomes uh, with this and the lesser the values the more this object is more like a cloth like a very soft cloth again the lower the value you can see a lot more of our uh, uh, details coming in there so again I'm gonna keep this struct value fairly low it's gonna stop trying to maintain its structural integrity of being that flat plane or that stiff plane and again, flex uh, is another one of those things that we're really not going to see a lot of difference between 0 and 100%. And that's because of uh, a lot of the options that we already have. And again, we're not animating, but basically flex controls the flexibility of uh, all these different polygons and uh, could create wrinkles and stuff like that with, uh, with compositions that aren't smoothed out or anything like that. So those are the options in the advanced tab. And this is looking fairly good. Uh, the one thing that we can do to really up the detail of the object and really sense, get a sense of the form that this is a letter A is our last resort, and that is by just adding more geometry. And while this slows down the calculation, slows down our viewport, you can see as I jack up this width segments and the height segments to 200, that you can really see that we're really getting, hey, you know, the sense of the shape. We can definitely tell that that is a letter A, right? So what I'm going to do is go to display, go to garage shading, and you can see that even with one letter, I'm still zooming around my viewport fairly nicely here. Uh, but I think that's looking fairly good. And we can adjust uh, how far that letter A is pushed in. You can see as I'm like adjusting this, my viewport's kind of getting bogged down here. So what I'm going to do is add those other two letters, uh, so the W and the X, to create that uh, original composition of wax. And uh, what I'm going to do is go to my level of detail here under Options, 
and just work at a low level of detail. Actually, let's go to medium. And what that's going to do is help uh, speed up my scene and just limit the quality of some of the, the deformers and stuff here. Uh, so now I can work much faster. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate this and I'll make this a W. And let's just turn on the visibility here by just turning off those stoplights. And what I'm going to do is just rotate this a little bit and scale this down. And the main thing is that you want these far enough from the back that it's pushing enough and making enough of an indentation that you'll still be able to make out this letter. Uh, and actually for this A, let's just rotate this a little bit as well. Have a little bit of like a tumbling action, something like that. So we have the W there. And then we'll duplicate the W and this will be the X. And we'll just switch that text to X and then just move this guy over here. And uh, maybe I'll make this W a little bit bigger, something like that. And then you can create any word you want, uh, move these around as much as you want. The one thing to look out for is you want these letters to be far enough away that they're not kind of bleeding or melting into the other letter because you want to be able to make out each of these shapes. You want to give enough buffer there. Uh, so right now we have our letters, but we need to still include them in the collider, uh, the collision deformer calculation. So under the colliders tag where we have our letter A, we just need to add our X and our W. And uh, we can just turn off the stoplights on these guys then. And right now you can't really tell. And again, that's because... Uh, our options level of detail is low uh, on medium. Let's crank this to high and see what this actually will look like. And uh, this is looking pretty good. Uh, you can kind of tell that that's an X, so I might need to make that uh, letter a little bit bigger. This W, I can probably move a little bit over the, to the left. So let's go ahead and do that. Go back down to the medium level of detail. Let's uh, move the W over a little bit. Let's just turn the collision deformer off a little bit. So there's our A, and then there's our X, and we'll make this X a little bit bigger. Maybe push a little bit forward. Something like that. All right, and that's, uh, I think that looks pretty good. Let's turn our collision deformer back on. Let's uh, hide these guys clicking the stoplights and again let's go back to a high level of detail and see if we can make all this stuff out all right cool this is actually looking really nice we can make out the w we can make out the a we can make out the x looking really nice uh, again we can you know if we wanted to stiffen this up a little bit make it less smooth we can adjust the smoothing deformer here so that's looking really nice too maybe make it uh Let's see what 89 looks. Nice. So a little less smooth, a little bit more uh, bumpy. Again, uh, the one really cool thing about these dimples is now that we have all these letters in here, you're really going to see that fall off, that collider fall off, as we go from none to that collider fall off with that negative curve. Really gets in that detail again. It really helps uh, create this nice little waxy, uh, feel and look at this. So I'm liking how this is looking. Let's go ahead and let's finish this off. Let's add some lighting and some textures. So let's go ahead and uh, what I'm going to do for this is you can see that you know my composition is already going pretty slow. My viewport's going kind of slow. So let's go to a medium, uh, medium level of detail so I can start freely moving around here a little bit speedier. I'll create some dramatic lighting here. Maybe put a light up here. And uh, let's add some fall off, so inverse squared, and uh, move this up a little bit. And let's give some color to this light, just a little bit of yellow color. Add some area shadows to that, some high quality area shadows. And uh, maybe bring down the intensity a little bit. And let's duplicate this light and just create another light over here. This kind of be an overhead light over here something like that and uh, let's see what that looks like so that's good like uh, positioning the lights where we can get some nice shadows in these little nooks and crannies here and again since we're at uh, medium level of detail 
once we go to high, you're going to be able to see those nice little details there anyways. And actually with the lights here, you can see that we're probably going to need to bring down the stiffness value of that smoothing deformer a little bit to remove those little jaggy edges. Much better. All right, so uh, we got some lights. Let's uh, create some textures, shall we? Let's go ahead, double click here and uh, double click our new material. And we'll just name this wax. And let's go ahead and give like this a yellow, like a light yellow, tannish kind of color. Let's apply that to our subdivision surface there. There we go. Let's go back to medium level of detail just for now. And uh, let's go to reflectance. Let's go to our specular. Let's uh, just add a little bit more specularity to this. Maybe increase the width a little bit more too. Make this look a little bit more waxy. Maybe introduce a little bit of color into this. Maybe some orangish, reddish, specular, something like that. And let's just add a tiny, tiny smidge of uh, reflection. So I'm just gonna choose a Beckman type reflection. I'm just gonna change the specular string just to move that down to zero. We don't need any specular in this uh, Beckman channel. Change the attenuation to additive so it's gonna apply this as an add blending mode on top of our color channel. And we're just gonna get a very low reflection value, say 3%, and then just give it a little bit of roughness to kind of blur out that reflection. And right away, we're not really gonna see all that much because we don't have any in our scene to really reflect. So you're not gonna see much reflection action happening or occurring right now. So uh, let's just go ahead and just give a little bit more specular, something like that. And uh, let's add some stuff to reflect to the scene. So nice thing about uh, area lights, specifically area lights, is in the details tab, let me actually go to uh, my four up view, you can see that with area lights, we got these little rectangles here with these little handles that you can adjust the size of these little rectangles. What these rectangles are is basically the area shape. And while they show up in specular, they do not show up in reflection. Uh, and what we wanna do is actually have these act as soft boxes and show up in reflection. So I'm gonna turn that on in each of these. Let me just select both of these lights. And this is gonna be a very faint thing that won't, will barely show up. Let me just render this corner and you're not gonna see anything. But uh, if I change this visibility multiplier, it's gonna crank up the brightness of those little rectangles. It's gonna treat them as like a luminant solid or a luminant plane. And if I render this again with that upped uh, visibility multiplier, now you're gonna see those nice little soft boxes being reflected on our shape. So that's looking really nice. We can also adjust the size of these as we please. All that good stuff. Looking good, let's see what this looks like. Cool, so we get a little bit of reflection, just a little bit. We got a little bit of blurring action going on and uh, just adjust these lights a little bit more. Something like that, look a little bit dramatic. Something like that. Let's go to our general tab. Let's just bring this light on the right down a little smidge. Cool. All right, so uh, this is what we got right now. Uh, it's looking fairly blah. <laughs> uh, and that's because, you know, to get this nice waxy look, we need some kind of uh, subsurface scattering or light transmission that happens on our material. So it allows some light to penetrate the surface or the volume of our object and make it look like it's kind of like a little bit glowy or uh, waxy like a candle, right? So what we're going to do is use some, like I said, subsurface scattering. And what you do with subsurface scattering is you load that into our luminance channel. So I'm just gonna turn on our luminance channel, go to effects, and it's gonna be cut off, but it's down here, subsurface scattering. And what that's gonna do is you can definitely see in this little material preview, let me right click on this and change it to, uh, change it to a knot. And you get a little bit more of a sense of what's going on here. Let's go and we can go into our settings here and change the color to something more 
yellowish. And I'm not going to go over a bunch, a ton of these options, but uh, the main thing being the color. You can change the color of what this looks like, uh, or the color of the inner transmission of the light. We can change the path length, which basically is how deep into your object does that light transmission go. So I don't want it to go too, too deep. So maybe seven. And then again, we can adjust the strength of how far or how bright that light that penetrates into our object surface, how far, how, how bright that is. So I'm going to use a strength of like 250. Uh, and then the only thing I'm really going to go over is uh, in the multiple tab, the only thing I'm going to do is turn on fast evaluation just so this renders a little bit faster. Uh, and let's just see what this looks like now. So you can definitely see that adding that sub uh, that subsurface scattering allows that light to penetrate into the surface of the volume of our object. And this definitely looks a lot more like a candle. Now remember, uh, this is not looking very defined because we're still at our medium level of detail. But right now I'm just working on making sure this, this candle uh, waxy look uh, is looking good. And the only thing I'm going to change now is this index of refraction. Uh, I looked up and I saw that the physical index of refraction of uh, wax is 1.5. And basically what that does is basically makes the darker parts of the object darker. Uh, so you can see that definitely. If I move this to 2, you can definitely see this kind of makes everything a little bit darker. So 1.5 is uh, the value that I found on the interwebs. And uh, this is looking pretty good. Let's go and uh, let's go to our high level of detail and see what this texture looks like with our full subdivision surface stuff happening and all that good stuff. So you definitely tell that we got some light transmission. I think we could get away with maybe brightening the uh, the light in our scene just to get a little bit more light. Uh, this is looking kind of uh, waxy. I think maybe our our reflection is a little bit too sharp. So let's just go into our reflection. Maybe bring that down to two and maybe increase the roughness a little bit more. Let's uh, go to our color. Maybe beef up. Yeah. Maybe make it just a little bit more and maybe make the brightness a little less. And let's go to our main light here and crank up the intensity just a little bit. Again, do another render, see if our lighting is all good. And with that brighter light, you can definitely see that light transmission it looks a lot more candly. We kind of blurred out our reflection a little bit, and I think that's looking a lot nicer because uh, you're only getting little hits right there, nice little subtle hits right there. Uh, but this is looking really nice. Uh, the last thing I want to do is add some noise and little imperfections to make this look a little bit more uh, organic. And we can do that by going into our bump channel, turning on bump, going to our texture, and just adding some noise. And I'm going to uh, go into our noise shader and make this noise fairly big. So maybe 1000 and maybe crank up the strength to uh, 30. And then what I want to do is with this overall big noise, it's going to create little, or not little, but big waves of bumps and noise uh, to our object to give it a little bit more uh, imperfection is by going and adding another level of noise that has smaller noise. Uh, so we get like some little tiny, tiny dents and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do to combine a couple of noise shaders together is by creating a layer shader. And when I create a layer shader, I'm going to go into here and uh, this is where I can start stacking different effects and different noises. So it's almost like working in Photoshop where we got multiple layers. So I can go into, uh, I'm going to do that. I can go into this noise shader and make some very small noise, like 0.1, and then change the seed a little bit so it's a little bit different from the original one. Go back uh, into our layer shader here and choose a different blending mode. So again, it's like working in Photoshop with different layers and all that good stuff. So we can change this to overlay. We can adjust the opacity of this layer on top of the other layer. And uh, let's just see what that looks like. So we added some subsurface scattering, got some noise uh, in our bump channel. 
So you can see a little bit, uh, it's just very, very subtle details, but those little subtle details uh, definitely add up and help with the uh, realism there. And speaking of realism, we just let this uh, finish up rendering here. What I want to do is go and switch over from our standard renderer to our physical renderer and just make this a little bit more physically uh, accurate of a render. So let me go ahead and do that. Actually, I think one thing I could probably do is push this X forward a little bit because you're kind of losing that. But for now, I think I'm just going to leave it. Let's go. Uh, Let's go to uh, our renderer, go to physical renderer, and uh, let's just crank up these values here to say like medium, I think that's good, and uh, I think everything else looks fairly nice, and uh, let's just go ahead and maybe add some ambient occlusion, that's going to add some shading where objects touch uh, together, so I'm just going to add just a tiny, tiny bit. and. Let's go ahead and render this to our picture viewer, render. And the one thing I like to do is when I'm rendering something, and you can tell that how faint some of the details were in, uh, in our picture viewer, or in our uh, viewport. And one thing I like to do is go into the filter, and let me just go ahead and reset this filter. But what you can do is actually like color correct inside of your picture viewer. So while you're waiting for this stuff to render, you can actually go in here and adjust the curves. And you know, again, I'd really like those dark areas to be darker so I can go ahead and see what that looks like. Creating a little S curve there. Go into individual color curves and adjust like the red. And again, this is a, you know, something to keep you busy while you're rendering here. Can you do a little pre-color correcting as this is going? And you know, maybe if you can't make something look good with the color correction, then maybe you gotta adjust the lighting uh, in your scene and stuff like that. If you can't try to make it look better with uh, color correction stuff, so I'm just kind of adjusting all these values. Maybe there's a little bit too too much saturation. I can bring that back a little bit. Maybe add a little bit more contrast. Really get uh, more of those darker shadows in here. So we definitely get a lot more detail and we can see what this looks like before and after. You can see that really pops more with the contrast and the, the S curve there. So this is looking pretty, pretty nice. So we just let this uh, render a little bit. So just to recap, we used a combination of a plane, some letters, and a collision deformer to uh, kind of push through and create the, this nice little waxy type uh, by having our letters push through our plane and use a smooth deformer and create some subsurface scattering textures to uh, create this really nice waxy composition. We rendered this out with physical render, did some color correcting in the picture viewer, and bam, we got our waxy type. All right, so that is how you create waxy text or really waxy anything using the Collision Deformer in Cinema 4D. So again, the Collision Deformer was the heavy lifter here. Uh, we used it to have other objects push in and indent into and deform another object. So all about the Collision Deformer in this one. Uh, we also learned how to create some waxy materials by using uh, subsurface scattering to allow some light transmission into our material, give that nice waxy candle kind of look. Uh, so if you have any questions on anything I covered in this tutorial, ask in the comment sections below. And uh, if you make anything using this technique, I would love to see all your waxy creations. Be sure to send them at me on Twitter or Facebook or in the comments section as well. If you like this tutorial, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button. And as always, I really appreciate all you guys out there watching. And I'll see you all in the next one, all right? See you there. Bye, everybody.